Okay, hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us live today. We are with Ryan Serhan. I'm Nick Baldwin, even though it says Tristan Almada on my screen here, but Tristan couldn't make it today. He's at the vet with his little puppy. So we have Nikki Klein from Florida who's joining us to talk to Ryan. We're really excited that Ryan's back with us for the third time with Lab Code Agents. And Ryan's team has 60 experienced agents and a marketing support staff. He's sold over 1.6 billion worth of real estate in the last two years alone. He is known, best known, uh, as the star of Bravo's Emmy nominated million dollar uh, listing New York. He's also the author of an awesome book called Sell It Like Sirhan, which I have read and I loved it. I really related to a lot of the, the ups and downs that Ryan went through over the years. Um, he's now started his own entertainment and media company, the Sirhan Media House Marketing Arm to both his real estate and television endeavors. We also have an amazing deal for everyone watching from Lab Code Agents with Ryan's course. Uh, it's ryansirhan.com slash join, and you can use lab code 10 for 10% off. Also, you get a second free training about lead generation at ryansirhan.com slash lead gen. All of that is going to be right at the top of this video, so you don't need to remember it. Just click it. Anyway, Ryan, thank you so much for being here. We're excited to have you back a third time. Super honored. We know you're super busy, even though you're in New Hampshire, in your home, quarantined. I like the beard. It's yeah. good. Did not grow out. No shaving. No, I, this is, I don't have to shave, man. This is just no one can touch me through here. You know, I get to, this is my my corn beard. I was told I should shave my beard because the virus likes to stick to it, and I just said, "Well, I'm just going to have to sacrifice because I'm not going to yeah. shave my beard." So I'm so keeping it the way it is. So we we're going to go for a a little walk. My You're my Wi-Fi is so bad in New Hampshire. Um, uh, they need to increase the Wi-Fi in New Hampshire. So I'm going to try to get to a place uh, that's got some better Wi-Fi, well, but we can talk not, as they go. Believe it or not, your connectivity is actually pretty good, but I just knocked on my wood desk. desk yeah, no so. problem. So listen, uh, we want to talk to you today, uh, you know, because I'm sure you're a very successful agent and there's a lot of unknowns going on. And while none of us have really gone through this, type of shifting or pivoting market. Um, I got into real estate in 2007. I believe you did in 2008. So we got into it in a really bad market. I did very well uh, during that market. So I'm blessed that I was able to learn in a down market. But yeah. what's the feeling right now, especially in New York City, specifically because you guys were hit the hardest, you're like the epicenter of the virus. What's the feeling around real estate right now in general in, in New York? It is tricky. Sorry, I'm just going from one house to the other to try to get yeah, closer we're to, to a Ryan's house. So that's yeah, also cool. to get to our New Hampshire house to try to get closer to a, a Wi-Fi signal. Hold on, let me see if I can if I can do this. Let me see anyone in this bedroom. All right, can you see me? Okay. Yeah, yes. you're great, dude. Okay, good. Great. Um, in New York, it is uh, it's tricky right now, that is for sure. Um, business is basically at a standstill for new business. Contracts that we've had out, we are doing our best to get them closed. We are doing virtual closings um, as much as we can, which is hard in New York because your you know, closings here are all handled between attorneys. You know, to get a $500,000 deal closed, you, got, you need like 12 people involved. Um, and so it's quite the process. And to do that virtually is really, really, really tricky. Um, uh, and then just new business, like no one wants to put their home on the market. No one wants to lower prices. Buyers, if they're going to buy right now, they want incredible deals because they think that this is the end of the world. And so this is just like 2008 and 2009. So here's my offer. It's 50% off. And, you know, and even if you wanted to move, you know, we have the problem right now where like you can't move. Buildings in New York City are not allowing outside contractors into the building. So that's, I can't get in and movers can't show up. So even oh. if you want to move out, you can't, it's not like you have a house where a moving truck can show up, right? right. Like you the building will not allow movers. So, so Brian, you, how are you being creative when it comes to showing the properties that you can't have on the market? Are you still showing them virtually or what, what does that look like? We're doing our best, you know, um, 
where we can and where my team is still in New York, we absolutely go and do virtual tours. You know, we're doing FaceTime tours uh, where we can. But remember, a lot of these buildings won't allow us even in to do a virtual tour. So in a lot of instances where the owners are still home, um, if they're quarantined at home or there's, if it's an investment property, if there's a tenant there, we've really been going out to the people who live there saying, hey, someone wants to see your property tomorrow virtually. Uh, can, we do a, can we do a Zoom call and you can give us a tour of your apartment that you're in? And can you please make sure you have a shirt on? Like, it, <laughs> like we've been doing stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of, listen, I have a whole, there's a whole media team side to our business. So we've been very proactive over the last couple of years about getting property tours, you know, interesting ones and cool ones shot of everything that we have on the market. So we have all these property tours on Instagram and Facebook watch um, as part of like our unlock series that we have in the can that we just send to a lot of people, but that's kind of the best that we're doing. But Ryan, more importantly than a shirt, but Ryan, more importantly than a shirt, pants. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you don't, they don't typically, you know, tilt the camera down. You know what I mean? It's more like keep it shoulder level. True. True. I completely understand. So I didn't think about that movers, right? Like I did not even cross my mind for a second that movers, you wouldn't even be able to hire them. So you're moving people into high rise buildings and, and things like that, where that can be very difficult. So, um, uh, you know, what, what's, what's kind of been your, your instant workaround in the sense of, you know, getting people into their new homes? I mean, listen, the way we're treating it very much, this whole thing, it's a traffic jam. It's not the end of the world. We've all sat in traffic before. And what this really feels like is that you're on a highway with a lot of other cars and you're stuck in traffic and your Waze app or whatever you use has told you that there's an accident up ahead, right? And you know there's an accident. You've seen car accidents before. You've heard about it. You've seen them in movies. But you don't really know how bad it is, although it looks pretty bad because traffic's really, really awful and you're slowly inching towards it. You can't really see it anywhere. And what's gonna happen is once we get to that accident, we're gonna gawk at it, we're gonna see it, we're all gonna kind of thank God that we weren't a part of the accident, even though we could have been in a heartbeat, right? Because it could always be one of us. We're gonna really slow down and then you're gonna do exactly what happens when you go by an accident. You forget about it, you look at the road ahead, you see there's no more cars and you fucking floor it. And you go as fast as you can to make up all of that lost time that you sat in traffic, but you still feel a little like, man, that was really, really, really bad. That's the analogy for what we're going through right now. So for all of our agents, buyers and sellers, this is bad traffic, right? You don't get out of a traffic jam and drive in the median and turn around like that's, you sit through it. It's going to be over. We don't know when, but it's going to be over hopefully sooner than not. Hopefully the accident isn't that bad. And when we come out of it, we're going to drive real fast and everything's going to go back to normal, you know? And what are you telling them? What, what, what kind of questions are your sellers and buyers having and what are you telling them? I mean, sellers, it's a, it depends on what stage of the deal the seller is in, right? If the seller is in contract uh, to sell, then it's when are we going to close? How are we going to close? Is the buyer still going to close? And every deal is different. You know, we have a buyer right now who wow. needs to close. The purchase price is $23 million. She's stuck in India. She can't get back. Um, and she refuses to do anything on this deal until she can get back. And she knows the world is still in one piece. And what am I supposed to say to that? Like, no, you have to close virtually. Like, what's the seller? What do you do? You know, so it's a yeah. lot of handholding. Um, sellers who are on the market, fortunately for us in New York, all of our MLS is paused the days on market. So we're all in, um, uh, uh, t you know, the, it's, uh, the, I can't remember what it says exactly, but it's, uh, it's counting suspended is what it says under days on market. So initially we were thinking we got to take everything off the market, but now everything's up on the market and counting suspended. And with every seller, it's kind of a, do we want to put it on the market or do we not want to put it on the market? The benefit to going to market now is that no one is going on the market. You know, it's like it's the, the percentage of new listings to market every week now uh, compared to last year is like 90% less. I, I actually, I agree with you. I, I got um, 10 listings in two days by talking to sellers and explaining that we have a captive audience right now. So if we can get your properties on the market, we have people that are going to be, they, they're at home. They have nothing to do except you know, look at pretty houses. 
So sure. um, it's a good way to, to get listings on too. Yeah. I, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's, uh, it's, a, it's case by case with case sellers, by. right? It's, a, um, it's with some of them, it's let's go to market, let's make the best use of our captive audience if we can, especially with a lot less competition than we've ever had in any spring market ever. And with some, it's, you know, I can only sell this by walking people through. And if I don't even have access to the building and I don't have any video of it and you don't live there and I can't do anything virtually, then why waste the time? And with buyers, it's getting them excited about the prospect of deals, right? Otherwise, buyers don't really feel like they want to spend money right now in New York anyway. Um, is, you know, New Yorkers are very cheap people. And the minute they see blood in the air, they're like, you know, if it's them screw everybody but once it's somebody else it's i'm gonna screw you exactly. right. hey so uh what do you what do you think about uh having your sellers now here this could be risky right because not everybody's a pro with a camera yeah but like yeah. what are your thoughts on having you know sending a nice camera over to your sellers and having them just kind of do a video of the interior of the home since you can't physically go in there what's your take on that so we've been having sellers just with their iPhones do it yeah, okay. and do fun little videos. It gets too complicated if I have to go out and buy them a, like we tried with one person to buy a camera, but then Amazon said it wouldn't deliver until April 19th. Cool. And, and it's just like, right. Cause it's, you know, cause we got a balance wanting to push business forward um, with like the realities and the gravity of the situation, you know, real estate, I know a lot of people think it's an essential business and I think your home is essential, but selling another condo comes second to saving lives, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't want any of my team members going to the post office because they feel like I'm gonna be angry that they didn't get a camera to that seller or you know, go out yeah. from their home. Like it's, it's, just, it's just not worth it. Life is too short and this time is gonna go by before we even know it. Like before we know it, it's gonna be September and we're all gonna be like, remember quarantine and how we never took advantage of it? And all we tried to do was get creative about how to work. And like, I should have just spent more time with my baby. Damn right. it, why didn't I do that? Why was I on Zoom the whole time? And, and now I'm so busy working. Like that's exactly what's gonna happen. Dude, I totally agree with you. And I just wanted to make a point to that, right? So, you know, uh, online you're seeing a lot of agents who are, you know, complaining that uh, they're considered quote non-essential, and I think that what they're doing is they're taking that to heart, right? They're it's bruising their ego a little bit. It doesn't yeah. mean it's important. It just doesn't mean that you're not needed right now to survive, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, what do you say to agents who are, you know, just kind of really irritated by that and not thinking about the bigger picture in, in the situation that we're in right, right now? We're in right now. I think any human being that doesn't think about the bigger picture should be sent to their room. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's a real situation, right? Someone is dying in New York City every two minutes now. Like that's no, that's no joke, you know? And it's like, they have hospitals set up on the grass in Central Park. Like it's, it is crazy. Like this is, when we look back at this, this is going to be like World War V, you know? And um, Bill Gates predicted it in 2015, right? The next World War isn't gonna be a nuclear bomb, it's gonna be a virus and it's gonna take out everybody. And we have to do our part to help stop it and to help save other people. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to me. Um, uh, but listen, that also, we also have to be a little selfish and take care of ourselves, take care of our families, make sure we manage income as best as we can, right? The, 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 the CARES Act came out on Friday and there are different things that all of us can Kind of be a part of as much as we can that are that are in there to give a little bit of relief even if it's not much right it's just a little bit um and i know a lot of our employers are also doing that um and it's the best thing we can do right now is use the phone right use the phone talk to our clients every seller and every listing prospect i call as much as i possibly can and not even about business just checking in and saying how you doing like, how's your mom? I know your mom is a little bit older. Is she okay? Is she good? Do you need anything? You know, because my wife is making some Spanakopita tonight because she's Greek. And if I have some leftovers, I can disinfect the tinfoil and get it over to you. You know, like people appreciate you reaching out about everything but that open house you really wish you could do this Sunday. Um, and same thing with buyers, like touching base. Hey, listen, the market's crazy, but 
every single person who bought a home between September 2008 and June 2009 has doubled their money, right? In New York City, that is a hard fact, more than doubled. And every single person who bought a home in that same time frame in New York City was told they were an idiot. The market's crashing. It's the end of the world. Why would you ever spend money to buy a home right now? And they all laughed their way to the bank years and years and years later. So to buyers, it's like, just remember history. Remember history. There's good deals. Let's hang tight. Let's be excited, right? Stay healthy and let's go find your next quarantine home. And lastly, I'll say what I tell buyers too is, um, and everybody, the there is no better way to show people the value of a great new home than by locking them in their current shitty one. Right. <laughs> can awesome. I make it? Can we? Can we quote you on that? That's going to be a new meme, by the way. Yes. Go. Yes. For it. Yeah. Ryan, how are you keeping your team's mindset strong during time? Yeah. How are you? How are you? How are you getting them to have a positive? Mindset. Wine. Lots of oh, wine. That's good. What kind of wine, Ryan? What should you what do you what do you I, suggest for Adrian's? Uh, um uh, I'm not a wine drinker ever and I'm not a coffee drinker, but I'll tell you, quarantine life, I wake up, I have a cup of coffee. And at night, you know, five thirty, six o'clock rolls around, even if I'm still on calls and stuff, I'm like, you know what I should have? You should have a big glass of red wine. Because quarantine's only gonna last so long. It's not gonna be forever the way they make it sound. Um, and so we go into a grocery store. I literally go to the wine section. I close my eyes. The first bottle I touch, that's what I drink. You know, it doesn't really well, matter I, to me. I have a suggestion for you because we all need to be cutting costs. So box, just get a box wine. I, I highly, I highly, Boda box, great. It's a great tasting box wine. So, so someone has a question, Jessica Morrison. She's curious about your thoughts on the economy and unemployment projections. What's, what do you feel that, what do you feel this is going to do? Um, I feel in the long term for, for real estate in general and what the economy is going to look like to you in the next six months or so. I think the next six months are going to be very bumpy, but I would say in the, in the real answer, not wine, um, uh, to you, Nikki, oh, about, how to, yeah, about how to keep, but both questions um, is, you know, you spend as much time as you can right now brainstorming and planning for what happens after the car accident because life is going to come back to normal way too fast and if you're not ready for it you're not going to be able to take advantage of all the opportunity that's going to be there because i'm telling you the economy is going to rip and roar from 2021 to 2031 like that is our time right people are going to be more excited about getting a new great home than ever before People have been making lots of money over the last 10 years. January and February were very busy months um, in all markets. And I think that's going to come back relatively quickly. I think unemployment across the board, I think a good majority of it is temporary um, and businesses are still gonna need to run and people are gonna come back to work. I think you're gonna have a lot of people who got fired or furloughed who are gonna be spending this time with their families and saying, I didn't like working at Macy's anyway, screw that. You know what I want to do? I want to get into real estate or whatever else their passions may be. That's always happened when these things change. You know, the amount of real estate agents that came new to the business in 2009 was insane. Like New York City went from 30,000 licensed agents to 80,000 licensed agents because of the recession. Of the recession. And you're going to see that, that across what, the board. Can you just tell me a little bit more about what that looks like? So you say plan, plan ahead. Tell me about two or three things that agents can do that would be really valuable right now in this moment. Yeah, we just, uh, I wrote out a 15-page COVID-19 guide for all my course members and, and sent it out to them yesterday. So if anyone here is a member of the course, you should go download it if you haven't, or if you're not a member, go and get it right now. Um, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of different things that people can be doing. One is you've got to keep your discipline to your day. One thing that I've been seeing, even with agents on my team, I talk to them at 10 a.m. and they look like they haven't showered in three days. Like, <laughs> you are, if you're healthy, right? And thank, and thank God that you are, this isn't, this isn't vacation, right? This is quarantine. Right. And what we wanna come up with is our core routine. Um, and that core routine should be based on the same discipline you had when you were still waking up and getting in your car and going to work every single day. Um, and probably more so now to keep your to keep your head on straight. 
So wake up and get some exercise going in some way, shape or form, even if it's just in your living room, right? There's every fitness influencer in the world is doing live videos right now. There's no shortage of free fitness advice out there and videos to follow along with. Um, and then set up a little home office somewhere quiet, even if it's on a floor in a corner and get to work with prospecting. The first thing everybody should be doing every morning is prospecting for new business. And in a couple ways, you can do that like never before. Because I'm telling you, once this is all over, any new person you meet now from a new Facebook group, from a new networking virtual group, all these groups are starting right now everywhere across Instagram, Facebook, even these Zoom groups, they're everywhere. Once this is all over, you will have no problem convincing someone to meet you for coffee because everyone's going to want to go meet for coffee. Whereas before, you're like, hey, I'm a real estate agent. You want to meet up for coffee? And people are like, uh, no, I don't need to move. Now it's going to be like, you're my new friend. For you're my, You are my pen pal, real estate friend. You sent me those listings, even though I don't want to move for three years. Yeah, dude, Red Lobster, let's do it. Like you're going to have an amazing time at getting people to want to come meet and come back to life after this. Um, but find as many groups as you can. And Facebook's a great place to be able to do that where you can find networking groups in your area, whether it's mom groups, parents groups, dirt biking enthusiast groups, and actively engage and talk to people and try to meet a couple new people every day and actually get off of Facebook that way. So then get into email, talk to them, see who they are and start building up your quarantine network base. Um, and that can take a good part of your, your day. And I think that'll really, really set you up for success down the road. And you'll always remember these people. You know, and like who- How is your prospecting, well, your your prospecting changing? Like what, what is the dialogue looking like now that is different than it would have previously looked like for your prospecting? What conversations are you having? I mean, now it's I mean, where, now. where are you quarantining? How are you hanging in there? Um, uh, do you have kids? How old are they? If you do, are, are you homeschooling? Are you going to make it through? How are you finding that? Um, were you let go? Are you furloughed? You know, what are you, how are you doing when working from home? What is your business? Oh, that's crazy. How do you think the world is changing? Oh, that's wild. Oh, your grandmother also knows my grandmother. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I think the best salespeople don't focus on selling, right? It's like a watched pot never boils. So if you try to push sales at any time, people feel it, they smell it and they don't like it. So if you yeah. push the relationship, and push the caring and the fact that you actually care about this new person that you just met through the internet, which now no longer is weird. Now the only way you can meet new people is through the internet. Then they'll care back to you because all people are doing right now is just talking to the same five people they know, right? There's only so many times you can FaceTime your brother. So like people want to meet new people and they're eager for it. Dude, you're speaking Nikki's language. Nikki runs a ton of groups. She has a great mom's group down in Boca Raton with how many members? 20,000? 14,000, yeah. 14,000, and she can attribute oh like 20 some odd million in, in volume to her business last year from that group alone. Crazy. And so that, yeah, right now, I you know, she- groups is my passion. I love bringing people together. So I yeah. encourage other people who are listening to start a Facebook group, be a leader, step up. And just people are looking for leaders in this time. And so we can be that person to facilitate all the valuable information that needs to come through to these communities. Yeah, for sure. I think there's so, going to be so much invention that comes out of this, right? Scary yeah, sure. times are the, the mother of invention. It's going to be, things are not going to be the same, I think, uh, not necessarily in the world. I mean, in the world, but specifically in, in real estate, I think, you know, the more agents get their face in front of other potential uh, buyers and sellers, like you said, like people are, are just... Are, are yearning for human interaction other than connection, connection that people that other than the people that they're with right now. So it's a, it's a really great time. What do you say to, because we, you said earlier, and I agree with you, I got into two, in the real estate business 2007 around the time you did. And that's when we saw a big influx in new agents. Do you think we're going to see that again now? And if so, what do you say new agents should be doing right now? Because it's such a weird situation that none of us are used to. Oh yeah, for sure. I, uh, yes, I think we are going to see a lot of new real estate agents joining. Um, I think they will start figuring out how to get their license right now and start figuring out how to learn right now. I mean, we've just, and I, I see that not just because that's what I think. I mean, I see that with our, our course. I'm sure you guys see that on Facebook too. Like, 
the amount of new members who've joined my course is like March has been insane. Like it's just nuts. So, and people, nuts. and we now have a way where you can get your license, license as part of the course too. So it's um, a lot of people coming out of finance jobs who've been let go or the restaurant business or the hospitality industry who've been let go or the retail industry. And they've always wanted to get into real estate. Um, so they're learning. And I would say right now, the best thing you can do is just learn, learn, take courses, learn, be part of Facebook groups, like what you guys have, um, listen, talk to other agents, reach out to them, create the connection. So when this all comes back to normal, you can hit the ground running. Um, and to any new agents who got into it in January or February or last year or the year before, the advice is pretty much the same, right? You never stop learning and you never stop practicing. I would say the best part about this downtime, if that's what we want to call it, as much as it sucks, there's nothing we can do about it. We are all in it together. It's not like there's one state that doesn't care. And so those people are still doing their open houses. For the most part, we're all in this together. So use this time to actually do what you otherwise never had the time to do, right? When you're busy running around, showing calls, in the car, traffic, and then the kids, and then this, that, the other, you don't have time to sit down and learn. You don't have time to sit down and come up with new ways to generate leads. Like you don't have time to do any of that. But now the government has told you that you have the time and we've got the time for a while. So use it. That's why we're putting out as much information as we can to the course as possible. And it's been awesome. It's like, it's my new job. If I can't sell apartments, I want to help people learn as much as I can. I love that you said that because I was on a webinar the other day saying some, something along the lines of, uh, of what you were saying in the sense of like, we always make excuses. Oh, I don't have time to watch that webinar. I don't have time to go to that conference. Well, now obviously we can't physically go to a conference, but I don't have time to learn this new CRM that I got. Now you have no choice. So what I've been telling people is, listen, you know, the, the government has said April 30th is when right now, of course, is when they're lifting the st shelter in place. So let's just say you have a month, but it's probably going to be longer. Right. Yeah. I know that some people are going to experience financial hardship. I, I get that. Like it's all relative, right? Like you sell 2 billion in sales, you, you live a certain way, no matter what it's going to affect the way you live and you're going to have to cut costs the way I live, the way Nikki lives. It's all relative. We're all going in the same, uh, having the same experience. But uh, if you're looking at the silver lining, like you guys were saying with mindset, this is the time to sit down and really learn the stuff you had to learn before. Map out how your business is going to look, you know, over the next six, nine, 12 months. Make yourself a really strategic plan and pour into people that you already know, past clients, friends, family, because that pipeline will start to build up and it's going to just kind of hit you like a ton of bricks before you know it. And I think if we all focused on that, we're going to be in a better place when we, when we get to the yep. end of it. Would you agree with, with that? Yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, look at the best athletes in the world, right? The amount of time you see them on TV playing games is probably 5% of their work time, right? The other 95% is a practice in some form or another, is working out in practice, working on their shot, working on their arm, you know, working on the game. And then it's 5% what we see them on TV. Salespeople, especially real estate agents, are the exact opposite. And it makes no sense. You know, 95% of your work is out there doing the game, is showing deals, you know, as much as you can. And then you spend 5% probably working on your craft. And I understand it. We're all busy all the time. And, and this, I do the same thing sometimes. But now is a time when it should be shifted. Really focus on yourself. Come up with new ways to generate leads now and once this is over. Come up with new goals for yourself for the summer and the fall so that you are ready to go. Figure out new neighborhoods you want to get into. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking this morning about, for me anyway, right? I, I got into this business uh, the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. yeah, so the, um, the, you know, that was the Great Recession, which taught me to diversify my income. Like, I wanted to make sure that I would never only focus on one stream of income because, God forbid, it just goes away, right? And then Hurricane Sandy hit not too long after that. And in New York City, it was really, really tough. That taught me to diversify my location because there was a lot of real estate agents who were only selling waterfront property down by the water, you know, lower Manhattan, all the, the, the city flooded and no one wanted to buy those types of properties for a while. This epidemic is teaching me to diversify platform, right? How many different ways 
tokenize, sell real estate and make income from real estate, it's possible, right? Is it just, it's not just showing in person. I can sell online. I could do more virtual tours once this is all over. Maybe I'll start a new platform just for selling virtually because I think that's where the world is going to go to eventually. And this is going to be what lit the fire for that, right? We're going to look back in 10, 20 years and say, oh yeah, all that started kind of back during COVID-19. Yeah. And so let's be a part of it. How do you see the future of real estate after this? Do you think there's going to be a massive change in the way that we do real estate? I think people are going to be far more comfortable doing video calls, Zoom calls, virtual tours than ever before, but it's still real estate, you know, like people still want to see the property. They want to touch it. They want to see the views. People are, are not trustworthy. They want to see it with their own eyes. Um, but I think a lot of this will, will help, right? Will help kind of push the business forward. Um, and I think real estate agents more than anything are probably going to realize they didn't need that fancy cubicle in that office as much as they thought they did. Right. Um, and I think that's going to transform the way real estate offices are probably set up and built as we, as we go forward. Um, uh, but other than that, it remains to be seen. I think, you know, I think we all just have to wait and see. It's gonna be, I don't know, this is a really, really scary time, but at the same time, it's gonna be really exciting because sometimes it takes tragedy to, to create new things, new ways of doing business, new inventions, new everything. I mean, um, if you look at every recession, every depression ever, I mean, without, without recessions, we would have no basketball, right? Like basketball was invented during a recession. Superman was invented during the Great Depression. Uh, the law of gravity was found during the bubonic plague quarantine in England. Like all of these things came from very, very hard times. I'm just like, well, I wonder what's gonna happen in 2021 and 22 and 23 that happened because of this time. Like, and let's sell all those people houses. Hey, Ryan. So Karen Stone has a great thought, and this is something that we've been talking about. We're seeing the Zillows and the Open Doors and the Redfins. We're seeing them pull back on some of their value propositions, like eye buying. Um, you know, so weird, so crazy. Yeah, I thought they right could right do that forever. I don't understand. It, but it makes it makes you think, right? This is a perfect opportunity because after just a week, they decided to pull back let's say the market tanked financially, those guys are goners, right? So, you know, what would be, what would be your advice to an agent who was so obsessed with, with those people taking over the world and taking over real estate? Now we're clearly seeing that their model can't even sustain a couple months of- Can't sustain four days of uncertainty, right. you know? And that's, that's kind of, I've been talking about that a lot because you, you know, anyone's a genius in a great market. Anyone can create a company. Anyone can throw money around. In a strong market, everyone is the best. But it's the real estate agents who grind, who work from their cars, who wake up tired, go to bed tired, spend the days on the phone with the people, right, who get the jobs done, that are the ones who are here up times and down times. Um, I think a lot of these eye buyers probably won't even come back. And if they do come back, it's just going to be, um, for PR, but they're really, really going to pull back because then there's fear, right? It's a lot of capital. If they don't have the capital or if the stock isn't where it needs to be, why would you ever do that? And I think all the agents who've been losing business to these eye buyers, if I'm them, you don't have them in New York, but if I'm them, I'm picking up the phone and calling all those sellers, right? I'm coming up with ad campaigns on Facebook, postcards, everything, email blasts, you know, that I, I'm now your, your eye offer guy. You know, I'd come up with something like that. You know, I buyers can't handle Corona. I can, I'm still here. Um, and our numbers are even better, right? Because I think a lot of those I buyer things, people still didn't understand how the fees work and how the fact that they're still actually selling for less um, than what most agents can actually get them. I'm taking advantage of it as much, as much, as much, as much as I can. Yeah, I, I think it's very telling, you know, especially a lot of these companies that are investor backed, you know, like, it's the investors that are saying, whoa, pull that back, pull that back. And if that's the case, you know, these disruptors are going to have a very difficult time. Actually like a financial crisis, right? Like Zillow was born from, from the financial crisis. That's how they were born. And now we're seeing mm -hmm. that they can survive, you know, a virus, right? It's, it's absolutely insane. Hey, I have a, a, a fun question for you, Ryan. So you do a lot of videos on YouTube and they're fantastic, by the way. 
are you going to be doing some, are you going to be changing that a little bit? Like doing some videos from your quarantined home in New Hampshire? Like, well, what are we going to see from you on your YouTube channel? No, oh, man. Yeah. Tomorrow night's vlog um, I made over the last couple of days on my phone and slowly but surely uploaded it so that the the media team can get it and edit it for me i have no idea what it's going to look like it's, it's going to look a lot like this like hello <laughs> you see me help help yeah that's what it's going to be and it's going to be like this and like this and everywhere and just you know really what um what i've been doing and what we've been thinking about and my team calls and um you know i I, I love, there's an app that I'm a part of called Community where people can text me. Um, and so I've been spending a lot of time on that with people texting me and doing these impromptu Zoom calls with everyone who texts me. And I'm just like, like having a glass of wine. And I'm like, hey, let's, let's have a glass of wine with 300 people I don't know. Let's do it. And like, that's been kind of fun. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm walking a fine line between, like I said earlier on this, on this call, like the gravity of the situation and not making light of the fact that thousands and thousands of people are dying and so many people are sick with also needing to still survive and move on and push business forward and still keep a sense of humor like you know you can't kick that right you have to you still have to still be human while we're here because i could i could get sick tomorrow right all of us could and so i'm going to make as much use of my time that i have here as possible how, how are you acting as a community leader like what what role are you playing in new york city right now um, I'm trying my best to uh, one be a thought leader to help people with what to do and how to do it and what they should be doing with their time right now, how to give back to others um, uh, through by through example, right, by leading by example, um, and how they can still stay productive in as many ways as I possibly can. I do that for my team. I do that trying to through social as best I can and through um, through a course, right, through our through our members. Um, it's tricky, but it's something that I'm navigating a little bit every day. Hey, uh, real quick, I wanted to ask you this earlier because I think there could be some takeaways from this. You know, you have a big team. You have 60 people or, or something on your team, and not all of them are agents. It's a mix of staff and, and agents. But what, what do your team meetings look like? What, what type of, like, how are you pivoting your training, you know, to make sure that they're, you know, individually doing what, what they need to do and they're staying positive other than the wine. What does your team huddles look like now? Do you lead them? What type of advice are you giving them? Um, you know, I just want to, I'm curious as to what, what you're doing in that aspect. Yeah. So before all of this started, um, I break my team cause it's too big. I break it into groups of to four different groups and okay. I meet with them every Monday, but the people on on my team only have to meet with me once a month um, and we go through a training whether it's that month it's on negotiating that month it's on how to comp for a deal that month it's on how to get buyers off the fence whatever it might be now um, I've been doing all team zoom calls on Monday mornings um, yesterday we went through managing COVID-19 and how to stay productive and what to be doing to keep your business moving kind of everything we've been talking about but really broken down um, using the guide that I said we you know we created um, to really really help people because what I find right now is a lot of people feel lost you know they're at home they feel lost they feel helpless they don't really know what to do they don't really have clients or if they do, the clients aren't talking to them because everyone's scared or nervous or their clients just got fired or they're stuck at home anyway. So what do you do all day? Like right. you can't just sit there and watch Netflix, right? You can't just eat all day long. Um, and I'm somebody who will go to comfort food like nonstop. Um, and so I really got to stop myself from doing that too. But I think that, um, you know, it's about structuring your day, which is what I talked about. And so yesterday we spent a lot of time with the team about making sure your day is still structured. Keep it as calendared, if not more calendared than ever before. Even phone calls, calendar every single one of them. So when you wake up, you look at your calendar, it's on your phone, you say, wow, I've got a busy day today, right? It's going to keep your mind right. It's going to keep you healthy. It's going to keep you excited. That way too, you don't have that like post quarantine slump. You know, the same way we have after vacations, where like that first week after a vacation, you're kind of like getting back into the swing of things. Like you don't want to have that, right? You don't want to miss a great first week back at trying to keep things moving forward. So, so don't. Um, and all the commuting time that you get to save right now, because you don't have to drive anywhere or go anywhere or take the train anywhere, that's bonus time for the family. If you're lucky enough to have a wife or a husband or kids, you know, that's like, oh, 
And so I'm doing that. Like I know that between now and my 12 o'clock, it would take me 20 minutes to get to my 12 o'clock. So I'm going to go and throw the baby in the air 20 times. Oh. And I'm like, dude, I love yeah. that, dude. You're never going to go show us. Yeah, no, I know. Or I'm just going to bring her. She's very dramatic. I don't know. This is my first one, and she's a girl. And oh, he's calling me. Hold on. Hey, Ryan, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Oh. I can see you. Yeah. Yeah, hold on. If you... Yeah, I can see you, but the service here is so... Oh, this is great. This is great. You're on the phone. You're on the phone with me. We can hear you. Go. Okay. Great. Well, uh... What, uh, what were we talking about? Oh, your kid. <laughs> so, so I think the, you're talking about baby. So, with the with the family, family, um, I think it's really important because I'm working now downstairs in my home office, and so in between calls and webinars and such with my agents, I'll take time and I'll go upstairs and hang out with the kids for 10 or 15 minutes and then come back down. And I think that that's actually, you know, adding to, um, you know, it's building the relationships with your family. I think it's a, a positive. Thing. Yeah, man, absolutely. You know, right now, I think that's what it's all about because before we know it, we are, uh, we're going to be out of this. We're all going to be thankful and it's, we're just going to go right back to work and work is going to be even crazier than ever before. We're going to come home. We're going to be tired. We're not going to have time for anybody. And like I said, right, we're going to say, remember quarantine? Remember that time when it was, well, it was a, a month, two months, when we just had to be at home with each other all day long, and all we did was complain about being home with each other all day long? Man, I wish I could have that back even for a day. So, like, you gotta, you got to soak it up. I can. Yeah. Uh, the baby just walked in. You're not going to be able to see Oh, her. no. Uh, no. Oh, no. That's, we've seen your baby on Instagram. She's super adorable. Um, Hi, Zena. Yeah. She's super adorable. Um, She's like, Dad, you told me you'd be with me by 1130. You got two more minutes. All right. Well, listen, um, we, we don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, we're, ex- we're happy that you guys got up there. And the, the nuggets that you gave us today were awesome. And we always, we always feel honored that you take time out of your day to talk to lab coats. And, um, you know, oh, you're back. I'm back? Yeah. I'm back. You're back. Unmute yourself. Oh, you can see me? Oh, you can see me. There yeah. you go. I just hung wait, up wait, on you. Wait, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you and see you. All right. Oh, wait, let me take a little video of this. Lab coats with my assistant, Zena, coming in to hang out. Zena, you want to say hi to everybody? Yay. Say hi. Say, say hi. We got 700 agents here listening to you and what you're saying. Hold on. Come here. Here she is. Oh, boom. Oh. Wait, show them your foot. Show them your foot. All right, this is Zena. Hello, wave. Clap, clap, clap. Yay. Yay. Oh no, she found something she wants to destroy. Is she so is she confused so and happy that you're home all the time? Uh yeah, I think it's it was a little weird for her for a little bit, but now she's um now she's yeah. way too used to it. Now I'm like, all right, I'm going to my home office and she's like, uh uh-uh. uh. I saw Cuomo said you can't go to work, Dad. And she's one, she doesn't even speak English yet, but I see it in her eyes. I'm like, no. I still got to work and I got to do, I got to do a zoom call with the lab code agents. They're this huge Facebook group. And she's like, I'm telling Trump, I'm telling Trump. I'm like, how do you even know who that is? What are you saying? Say hi. Oh no, don't Daddy, hit the key. He likes it. Daddy Cuomo say no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Show me your pretty hair. She got all this hair now. You're cute. I've only seen you on Instagram. She's 13 months old. Oh my gosh. Dude. Yeah. You, you, we, I have two boys, seven and four. Um, so we put a we put a bounce house in my living room. Like my wife oh, ordered a bounce house from Target, and my living room's like a carnival now. Those are the things that you can do in times of crisis. Are you gonna she change a diaper? On, She's very uh, stinky right now. These are the things. These are the things I do now. I went. To, I got my oil change the other day. That was cool. I haven't done that ever. You know, I am a, I'm a pure suburbanite. It's a little humbling. It's a little humble. Yeah, man. But listen, dude, we, we appreciate you being on here. Um, you know, listen, you're, you're at, it's 1130. We want to hold, hold you accountable to, to daddy-daughter time, so we don't want to keep it too much longer. Um, but we appreciate all the insight that you've given us. Um, you know, just like, I think the thing is, and I was talking to Nikki earlier before we got on this call, she took 11 listings in three days. Oh, that's the best. 
it's really all about how you approach the situation, right? Yes. And it's just about well, how, you, how you present it too, right? Everything is about the yeah, yes. everything. Yeah. yeah. yeah listen, if you can show value to any of your clients, any sellers, value, any buyers, buyers. value is valuable. If they are going to sell anyway, you might as well go to market now, captive audience, and there's much less competition. If you're going to buy anyway this year and you still have your job, and I know you're scared, but it's going to be okay, let's make some low offers, sight unseen. We've got really, really, really eager sellers right now. Let's go. You know, there's, there's lots of things you can be doing. So get off of Netflix, put some structure into your day. Um, hold on, baby, Zena, don't go no. <laughs> Oh my God, this is going viral. This is going viral, by the way. This Sorry, is- she, she, she found me in here and then she goes in the bathroom and her favorite thing is the trash. Not good. Of course. Um, and yeah, I, listen, I'll just leave it with, uh, um, I put a bunch of uh, interesting, I hate cold calling. And so um, we made a lead generation webinar um, for free uh, right before this all happened. So if you go to uh, ryansterhant.com slash lead gen, you can watch that. I think it's half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Um, yeah, I have um, I have that. Yeah, check it out. Um, post that and, again. Uh, we do a lot for our course members right now. That's where I'm spending most of my day, you know, it's just hanging out with all That's of our awesome. members, talking to them, Zoom calls, Facebook, everything. And that's at ryansterhant.com slash course if you want to check it out. Yeah, I just want to add real quick before you go. Nikki made a good point earlier. You know, the the industry right now is is very is in need for leaders, and they're they need guy agency guidance. And I love that you're stepping up and you're doing these calls and you're do you're pouring into agents that you don't even know, and you're just pouring into your team and you're just kind of guiding people because they need that right now. And you made a really good point just now. Anyone who anyone who's whose house is on the market right now, or anyone who wants to list their house right now, they have to sell. Like they have to, right? Anyone who's looking for a house to buy, they have to buy. And so you got to find those people. And the only way you find those people is having is to have conversations, which people are more open to now than ever before. We lost them. We lost them. Hey, lost that's them. fine. Look at this. Look how we ended. Uh, screenshot though. That's perfect. Perfect. Screen. Screen. I'm taking the screenshot right now. Nope, nope. Ryan Serhant's. Kid. I'm just going to screenshot this. Here we go. Okay. Awesome, guys. Thank you for joining us. Again. So I'm going I'm to leave you there. Because I got to tear the page. Yeah, dude. Go enjoy your day. Go enjoy your, your family. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.